Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your original YouTube shop teacher. And I'm standing here next to my 10-inch self-bend heavy lathe, and I've got a little job to do here today, and I need to face both ends and then cut off a piece of this 2-inch heavy wall tubing. Now, it's long enough and heavy enough to where I need to use my steady rest. So I want to talk about a good way to set this up. A lot of people have trouble with this. And the method that I'm going to show you here, <clears throat> pardon me, I learned from Joe Pye, so you can go to his channel. Maybe he has a better video on it as well. But let's take a look at how I'm going to do this. And the problem with uh, not having it set up correctly is that there's a tendency for your work to creep out of the chuck no matter how tightly you think you have it uh, fastened. Actually, I already have the work set up and it is ready to face, and I could go ahead and do that, but I'm going to back up and show you this method, which I think you will find quite interesting. And you can see that this is very heavy wall tubing. In fact, the bore is one inch and the OD is two inch. Okay, here's what I made up, and it took about 20 minutes to make it. And this is a piece of 1 inch round stock, about 16 inches long, but the length doesn't really matter. So I didn't cut it off, it was just a piece that I had laying here. And uh, the, the diameter doesn't really matter, as long as it's up to the task and will not flex. But this is just right for what I'm doing. So what did I do on the end? It looks like a boring bar, but of course it's not. And this is just a piece of quarter inch stock, and I got a blind hole drilled in there, and a thumb screw is a little handier than a set screw. And I put a bit of a radius on the end. Well, so what you're thinking? It looks like a boring bar, but this is, a, I thought I could use a boring bar, so here's a boring bar. But because this hole is not blind and goes all the way through, one cannot get a good measurement right here. Now, Joe shows how to do it using gauge blocks, so there's a lot of different ways of doing this, but this is my uh, uh, way of doing it. So I don't really know what to call this, so I'm just going to call it a feeler. And I have it preset now for one and a half inches. Well, where did I come up with the one and a half inch? What, what the heck does that mean? So I drew a little sketch. Let's take a look at it. Remember that the tubing out in the lathe is two inch is in diameter and this is an end view of this device, the feeler. So we want, uh, since the tubing is two inches, we want this to extend exactly one inch but I have to take in the uh, radius here of the one inch sock, which is half inch. So that's why I'm setting it for one and a half inches. And it works best to make your setup with a micrometer, I believe. That's set for one and a half inches rather than the digital caliper. So it's right on or within a half a thousand. So that's, that's going to be just fine for this purpose. Now do you see why I couldn't use the boring bar for that that has a hole that goes all the way through because the anvil of the micrometer would fall into that hole. And this could be used for many different diameters or make different lengths of rod, but if your work is real small, of course, you're going to need to make one of these feelers that is smaller in diameter. Now let's go out to the lathe again. I'm back out on the South Bend lathe and the feeler is installed in the chuck and I must say you would be better off holding it in a four jaw chuck and indicating it in and that's what I did in my original setup but to expedite things I'm half stepping here and I'm showing it in a three jaw but use a four jaw and this is long enough to where it reaches out to the steady rest in the position where I'm actually going to use it. Open the steady rest, and unfortunately these are brass jaws and they're not in real good condition. In fact, probably should be reconditioned with the boring bar, but for the purposes of this demonstration, there is no need. So, starting with, let's say, this jaw, and I'm going to back it out a little bit. You can't see the knob, but I'm, you can see that I'm moving it in and out. And if I bring the feeler around now to the center and then come up, like that until 
it just barely makes contact or it might be a good idea to use a cigarette paper you know or or something like that to get just the right feel or possibly put a little bit of sharpie marker on there and you'll see where it makes contact perhaps now you can see a little mark on it and now looking at the back jaw and I'm feeding in until I have just a little mark. I don't want it to be much because there needs to be a minor amount of clearance there. But I'm doing that mainly to illustrate what I'm doing with the feeler. Does this make any sense to you people out there at all? And now I close the steady rest, make sure that I'm backed off a little bit with this and tighten it down and I'll do the same thing but you darn near have to stand on your head in order to do that. I adjusted the top one off camera because you couldn't see what I was doing even if I had the camera running. But now I will lock all three jaws and I'm ready to open it back up and mount the work. And now you can be confident that all three brass jaws are set correctly and will not influence the work in any way which is what causes the work to creep out of the chuck. Probably many of you have had that happen and didn't understand why. But if the work is in there just a little bit cocked because of the steady rest, that is what is going to happen. All right, now I'm going to take this out and put the work back in. All right, using the four jaw chuck, I have trued it in within a thousand. I have a little problem here. Either the work is slightly out around because it is tubing and there was some rust on here. I did polish a little bit of that off, but it's just an old rusty piece of metal, really. So it's pretty darn close at any rate. And let's take a look now down at this end. All with some oil with the brass jaws. Now, you may not need oil if you have rollers that, that wear in just a second. Then I'd like to open it up and polish that because there's still rust. Wow, that was a long setup, just so I could face the end, wasn't it? I think I forgot to tell you, notice there's a little distance right here. Well, the work did not creep. I started out that way because, in fact, I made just a little bit of a Sharpie marker by each jaw to proof and make sure that it's not creeping out. And it's rather alarming when that happens because your work appears to be growing. And so at some point, depending on how bad it's creeping, it might actually uh, break the tool or something like that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and understood what I was talking about. And make yourself one of those feelers if it would help you with your setup. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. See you next time.